Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is my next cleaning episode and I'm hoping to improve on what we did last time. So last time I tried to clean up the gel coat on this boat, which is in terrible condition. And I used a very dilute amount of kind of standard boat wash detergent. And it, it kind of got the worst off it, but it's still not a particularly clean finish. So today I'm gonna to do a little experiment and I'm gonna use three different products. I'm gonna use this, but at a one-to-one -one strength. Um, I'm gonna try the carbonate of soda, and then, slightly strangely, vinegar. Just to see what happens really, because I don't know what's embedded in this gel coat. So I'm gonna split this section out into three different areas. Have a go at cleaning each up. Then I'm gonna degrease them with acetone, and then I'm gonna run a polisher over them. And we'll basically see whether or not that works, whether or not it just ends up smearing dirt around, or whether or not we get any success with it. I will say that I still think Everything I'm doing here is probably a waste of time because I feel like this gel coat is probably beyond saving and I'm going to end up needing to paint the boat anyway. But I figure it's worth giving this a try first before I start whipping out the big jobs like repainting the boat. So let's see how we go. Random intermission. I broke my nose. Then it had to be rebroken uh, in surgery to be realigned, hence this. Okay, so we're gonna have boat wash here, the carbonate of soda here, vinegar here. The plan of the bicarbonate is just to mix it up with water into probably a paste and give that a go. Now, I'm not gonna need too much of this. The reason I'm doing this on a small area so that I don't spend an absolute fortune on on product so yeah hopefully I won't need too much I'm gonna go one-to-one -one on detergent to water I'm really not looking to use much of the tool 100 mm of that Right, so I'll probably go and do this one first and I'll come back and I'll mix up the, the other two. One thing that went wrong last time was the sponge I used. Um, it was a bit too frail for the job, so hopefully this will do a slightly better job. Right, so I'm gonna wash this area down as best as possible and I'm gonna probably leave it sit for a little bit agitate it again and um, and then rinse it down. I don't know whether I'm gonna brush it down at this point. I don't know if I've got a suitable brush. Have a look. Oh, actually, I have the noodle. I'll use a noodle, because that, that'll probably agitate better than this will. I'll start with this one. I won't start with this one. I'll save it. I guess in the interest of science, I might do the, the seat area as well, because why not? I've clearly used way too much product for the area, so I'll save that and go over somewhere else afterwards. Okay, 
So I'll be honest, my boom is blocking the uh, sunlight from that area, so it probably affects how it looks, but it doesn't really look any different. It does look like the area is actually clean, but as I was saying before, like the, the dark areas of it are actually the micro cracks. Let's see how we go. I'm gonna wash that down. Next I'll do the bicarbonate of soda area, then I'll come back and I'll kind of wipe each area dry, then we'll degrease, then we'll try to polish. So for the bicarbonate of soda, I'm gonna try and get it like a slightly loose paste consistency um, and see how that goes. Obviously I've entirely not thought this through and I don't have a way of neatly measuring this. winner is you never seem to need much water. Obviously I have no way of <laughs> picking it up. Let's try this. Yeah. yeah, too much water. Okay, that seems that seems reasonable. Probably used way too much of this. Very much not an expert in Right, anything really, but yeah. Okay. Still seems a little bit thin. Got it. I'll focus on cleaning this top area before I move on to the the seat. The seat I'm less bothered about. I mean, this is all non-slip anyway, so it's gonna be a bit of a different cleaning process, but I don't wanna pick up a load of dirt off here and then go scrape it into this section. Or oh, maybe I didn't go enough water. Sponge is starting to fall apart, I guess, fairly predictably, wiping it on non slip. It's fairly abrasive. Alright then. Okay, I'm going to leave that sit actually whilst I do the vinegar. Um, Watch the excitement as I mix the two. Now vinegar is a bit of an oddball in this. Um, I've heard it's very good for killing mildew and mold and things like that. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be of any benefit here or not. But let's give it a go. So yes, I'm changing my cleaning medium again. Um, I mean, really, I guess I should use a microfiber mitt, but this is just a microfiber cloth, so pretty much the same thing. There's probably a load of people that are watching me doing this going, don't do that on gel coat, it's just gonna take it off. And yeah, maybe it is. 
I don't really know. You're looking at the condition of it, would that be a bad thing? Yes, probably would. Right, it's picked up some dirt, at least. Right, okay, so that's the boat wash at one to one, done and rinsed off. The bicarbonate uh, and water is still sat on there and the vinegar is still sat on here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is clean the sawat now, dry it, and then we'll have a go of a polish and see what happens. What I might do is just rub the vinegar over the bicarbonate area. I wonder if that will help lift the bicarbonate and clean. Seemingly not. Expected a bit more of a reaction. And the cloth is dirty, which is a good sign. Right, I'm going to rinse that all down. Okay. I'll just rinse this down with water. to dry them off with microfiber. Okay, I would say on first appearance, but it is difficult to tell with that boom in the way. I'm not sure if I can do much about that. Let's have a look. Now I'm in the way. I can't see an awful lot of difference. Possibly this looks the whitest, which is a bicarbonate of soda. On the seat area, the vinegar didn't actually do very much, but I didn't really focus on the black areas. The bicarbonate noticeably seemed to clear up some of the dirt that was in these cracks here. And the boat wash again left a lot of that black stuff behind. So, so far, I would say the bicarbonate's done the best job. Although it's quite slow to apply and I had to use quite a lot of it. Uh, and I'm not sure it would be feasible to do a whole boat that way. But anyway, that's not the purpose of this. This is just working out what does and doesn't work. So my next stage, I'm gonna get some acetone. I'm gonna degrease each of these areas and that will hopefully pull out any remaining wax that may be um, lurking uh, or silicon or anything like that. And then I will run a polisher over it and then we'll realize the whole thing was a complete waste of time anyway. Possibly goes without saying, but acetone is really nasty stuff. Don't get it in contact with your skin. Yeah. Okay, the acetone itself didn't seem to pick anything up really. That seemed to be a bit of rust from the top of the can, but um, yeah, I guess that's a good thing. Right, rave polishing. So for polishing, I've got a couple of different things. I've got a proper boat one-step compound polish, which is designed for gel coat, and I've got like an automotive one, which is designed for cutting. Now, automotive paint is a lot harder than gel coat, 
Um, and so this may be way too aggressive. So I'll probably start with the Meguiar's, which does say aggressive cleaner plus polish. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't have too much wax built in because obviously my goal at the moment is strip everything back and then we'll wax it if we get to a point where it's actually worth waxing. Um, yeah, let's try this. Restores and neglected surfaces. We'll see about that. Removes heavy oxidation, tough, hard water spots and scratches. Okay, so I have something called a dual action polisher. Um, and what that means is it doesn't just simply rotate. It rotates about this kind of weird elliptical orbit, I guess, is the best way of describing it. And what that means is it doesn't just repeatedly polish exactly the same area, which helps protect you against burning through soft paint, gel coat, etc. So I've gone with this rather than a traditional kind of single action. I'm going with a light cutting pad. Again, this is all automotive terms though, so I don't know what light cutting automotive-wise will mean on a, on a gel coat. It might be way too aggressive. Um, but, I mean, I've seen and heard from many people that actually a light sanding can sometimes help restore it. So with that in mind, we're gonna go with this. Get my nice new lines out of the way. So I would say actually that does seem to have improved it versus here. I'm going to move along and see whether I get um, a similar result. you are. That looks better. I think that looks better. I think. It's important to note because this is a cutting compound it, it should leave it still quite a matte finish. If this works what I'll basically do is run through finer uh, compounds and you'll, you'll bring the shine back to it in theory. There it is, carry on. Whoops, I wasn't supposed to let it dry on the surface. This is bad. Probably need to wash that off then. Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, let's keep going on here. I'm going to wash that down with water now and um, dry it off as per the instructions, which I should have read in advance. But oh well.
Well, that seems somewhat inconclusive. Um, yeah. It's been interesting. It seems to have done a reasonably good job taking back the impact of the cracks. But where there's the really small, I don't even know if they're really small, but maybe it's micro cracks that have got more ingrained dirt. It hasn't seemed to clean those up quite so well. I'm considering running a more aggressive polishing compound over it. That might be worth a go. Actually, I mean, if I was in the sunlight, other than these big cracks, it might not look too bad. But, yeah, difficult to tell. Very difficult. Um, as to which cleaning products work the best, now I've run the polisher over it, it's not made an awful lot of difference. Um, yeah, very difficult to tell in this light. It's quite an overcast day today. I don't know if that's beneficial for this or not, but they all just look kind of similar to me. Right, let's try the more aggressive compound polish. Let's see how that works. I'm going to try the more aggressive compound on a, a lamb's wool um, polishy thing, which I think is more aggressive in itself. So. A very good chance there'll be no boat left at the end of this. And I might just try this on one of these sections because actually I feel that the cleaning product I used perhaps didn't make all that much difference in the end. They all seem to strip off enough of the dirt. I, I still maybe think the bicarbonate's done the best job, especially looking down here. But in terms of the meaningful effects it's had on the polishing job, not so much. I mean, maybe just polishing it is kind of negating the cleaning anyway because it's just stripping off whatever's left. But this is this is fixed stuff. I am a little bit worried about what this is going to do. Oh uh, dear. Still, in for a penny, in for a pound. It smells aggressive. It smells like petroleum based joy. Yeah, genuinely a little bit concerned what this might do. Kind of go low speed on the polisher. Got speed gel coat. Difficult to sell again. I think I don't know what I think. I really need to see before and after pictures. Um, I don't think that did much extra versus what the previous polish did. Yeah. So now it's a question of how do I feel about that. Am I happy to live with that for the boat? Um, or do we consider paint? Because I'm not sure any more polishing is going to improve that. I think those micro cracks are all the way through to um, the fiberglass behind the gel coat. And therefore all I'm doing is just cutting the dirty layers off back to that, but it's never going to get rid of its micro cracks. Oh well, it's worth a try. So hopefully you can see the before and after difference. And it has definitely taken it back to white. And in fact, maybe if I did that, it has got a bit of shine into it actually now. There's a little bit more sunlight. I can actually see a little bit of gloss to it. 
I don't know. Maybe it'd look alright in the sunlight. Maybe I should be happy with this. Although I don't know if I want to go around the whole boat doing it. Ugh. Okay, so that's another video. Um, what does it mean for what I'm going to do to the outside the boat? I don't really know. I need to come back and have another look at it. Um, yeah, don't really know. Kind of happy with the results. I'm just not happy with the amount of effort it looks like it's going to require to get the whole boat to that stage. So maybe I'll just go with the thing of pressure washing the deck. It looks like the um, anti-slip paint is just going to come off with the pressure wash anyway. So maybe just repaint those areas and just deal with the the white gel coat being less than perfect don't know yet plenty of other jobs to do on the boat so it's probably going to be a priority call whether or not i'm happy with that or whether or not we go for a full kind of polyurethane paint layer over the top of it but that means taking more deck hardware off oh, too many jobs So I was just about to leave the boat and I thought I'd use my leftover cleaning materials and um, basically I used a bicarbonate of soda and I didn't use it here and I did use it along there. So you can definitely see that even in the non-slip areas it, it is quite effective at getting that out and that was it was about maybe two minutes work giving that a scrub so I think if I left the bicarbonate to actually work it might have taken that back to quite a clean colour. But it's definitely worked. So yeah, that's one thing at least. 